Hello and welcome to another seminar of our IOCN SSE Anteaters Law from the Armadillo Specialist Group. Today we are honored to uh, have a talk um, about rehabilitating Sinarchans that will be given by Tinka Place. Tinka has a huge amount of experience uh, working, especially with sloth, but also with anteaters and armadillos. Uh, so uh, please, Tinka, go ahead, uh, tell us about all your experience. Um, it's really, it's, it's wonderful, all the work you do uh, rehabilitating and also transmitting all your experience to other uh, sloth rehab centers and rescue centers. Oh, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, well, I've been working from Colombia and uh, we started in, uh, or I started in 1996 when I received two slots. Uh, for me at that time, it was uh, really uh, something out of uh, whatever I was working at that moment, working in uh, natural sciences all my life. Uh, so in front of me, I had two different uh, slot species, two different families. So we started with uh, two toad slots and three toad slots. And I realized that, that they had very little to do with the concepts of rehabilitation, call it re rehabilitation at uh, that time, and even less talking about living beings uh, who needed our help. So for me, those first two slots, a uh, two-toed slot, Juanita, and the three-toed slot, uh, Campanita, that's how we call them, and my little son, two years old, he had uh, taking care of those first two uh, uh, of them. So those slots uh, gave us really a lot of, uh, of teachings. I always call them my biggest masters. And for this purpose today, uh, I decided to share with you generally things that very many people, when they talk about the rehabilitation, uh, they don't have in their mind. So from uh, the slots, we extended be, uh, besides two and three toad slots, as you can see here, to anteaters as well as armadillos. So <clears throat> it is very important to know when you start working in conservation through the rehabilitation that you have to enter into so very many other different theories. And an extreme importance is to educate people. Well, all of us start somehow, but throughout the years of working, it is very important to get to know about the species. So one of the very important things, I consider them important as well as other people who really work with slots, uh, to know that slot, slots are not bears and ant eaters neither. All of them that uh, belong to a very big group of animals called Senartras. Why it is important, especially in slots, that they are not bears? Because all of us, when we were little, generally we had a little teddy bear we wanted to sleep with, we wanted to cuddle and so on. So when people see a little slot, especially a three-toed slot, it always comes to them, oh, I want to carry it. I want to adopt it, sleeping with, with a living being who was smuggled from, from, from the nature. So that's one of the very important things, getting to know that they are not bears, that they are not pets. So besides, besides Xenartras, we extended slot experience, as I like to call it, to other threatened species that do not have a specific final destination. As uh, porcupines, uh, uh, some primates, and so, and, and so on. So we realized from the very beginning when we started, there was no uh, uh, WhatsApp, there was no internet and so, and so on. So it was not very easy to get the basic information, especially the information 
from two very important uh, scientific workers as Montgomery and Sanquist. So <clears throat> we had to start with investigation, investigation in Colombia in terms of biology, in terms of ecology, in terms of medicine, slot medicine, which means veterinarian sciences and so on. So our working tools from the very beginning uh, have been rehabilitation, investigation, education, and work with communities in search of productive alternatives and teaching them why they are not supposed to take the wild fauna from their house, the, the, the jungle, the forest. So we extended in all the natural sciences, medical, as well as social. Our participation in the specialist group, which is of great pleasure sharing with uh, all of us from the South and Central America. Uh, we worked from the very beginning and the workshops and educational campaigns with all the public, not just kids, not just adults. From our uh, social investigation, we could, we could get to know what type of public is important to make aware of what was going on. Uh, as well, we participate in the prevention of the illegal extraction and trade, uh, which is of great pleasure for me to say that we manage helping the government entities because it is not the direct work of the foundation, but with all the investigation that we got, we shared with the government entities and the biggest place for selling slots in the department of Cordoba was really stopped. So from 2014, 2015, there are not very many slots coming to the second biggest cities, big, biggest city in Colombia, which is Medellin. It really is a pleasure to share that with all the, all the public. And another very important thing, and now 15 of this month, we celebrated 11th Slot International Day. As a part of education and bringing the world of slots to humans, in 2010 was created a Slot International Day. And that day, taking, uh, taking into advantage that we are talking and hopefully everybody will listen to our conversation, it is, it is formed for the month of October, the third Saturday in October. You may ask why? Because October is a month where very many different uh, international days you celebrate uh, animal, uh, animal Day, Kid Day, and so, and so on, as slots are kids from the forest. So we decided to, to use it for the third Saturday in October, that means that every year it changes. Why Saturday? Because people generally on Saturday still have their activities, but the importance of that day is to learn from a slot, not to have hurry, uh, to be very respectful, not to bother uh, anybody, to enjoy whatever you want, whatever you do that day. So that's why Saturday was, was chosen. Uh, what, uh, what we generally do, starting talking about the rehabilitation, but the rehabilitation is a very broad term and uh, it implies very many things. So our very important approach to all the animal rescue is because they are different, this, that does not mean they are less. So when we started observing and treating animals that would come to us to, to attend them and rehabilitate them with this attitude, we started having a very big difference in the rehabilitation and we started getting some results. Uh, we have been pioneers in neonatology, in wild fauna and the use of holistic integrative medicine these medicines that really help very, very much to slots as well to other wild fauna 
because first of all, we do consider emotional states in each animal that come to us. And it is very important to have the conservation biology and animal welfare supporting each other all the time. And when you receive an animal, it is very important as well to be fair with the animal and his final destination. What I mean by that, very many times, and slots are the first ones, people say, oh no, slots are very difficult. There is nothing to do with them. So what do you do with them when they come? Oh, I let students carry them until they die. That is, well, I, it is not necessary to, to say anything for this type of uh, approach. So if we want to change that, we have to be open-minded and we are not uh, supposed to judge a priori the animal. Very many times, yes, they do die, but very many other times they survive and you can return them back to the, to the forest. The most important thing is to give the opportunity to a living being to express himself. So why Xenartras? Well, they are very threatened species. In Colombia and in all their geographical distribution, uh, but uh, we cannot say that according uh, to the specific destination, they are threatened or they are not because they are very difficult to study. E and they are very appreciated as not non-conventional pets. It is very important for us to, to know that they are one of the oldest uh, species on the American continent. So it is really very important to pay a lot of attention to them and help them. So when we talk about the wildlife rehabilitation and the final destination of each animal uh, who comes to, to us, or I would say to whichever center who receives animals, it is important to know if the final destination is for conservation, which implies rehabilitation and posterior release, or they, the animal is going to be uh, de uh, defined to be in captivity, for educational purposes, for animal exploitation, for zoos, sanctuaries, or the animal has to be put to sleep, which means euthanasia. All those things are really very, very, very important because it gives you somehow a north where how you are going to continue with the attention. It is very important to know what happens to animals before they come to us. So they, they generally pass through very complex situations. Sometimes they pass through a long and very inadequate attention time. They suffer from a very sudden changes in their psychology, in their physiology, excuse me, because they were not fed good or they were forced for one or another reason, generally. So technicians say they have to eat what I prepare them. Well, <laughs> I guess those who really work with wild fauna, you can never say such a, such a thing. In very many other cases, they are just numbers and they are things. And they are object of our study. People, professionals, they don't treat them as living beings who need a very particular attention. And very many times, most of the times, uh, all the centers suffer from the application of medicine, feeding, and management in zoos. We are talking about the animals who recently came, or relatively recently came, uh, from their uh, natural habitat. So they do have a really very different physiology, different history from those animals who stay in the zoos for very many years or generation after generation. All these situations uh, bring a lot of very, very big and high mortalities. So I think it is important to, uh, to talk about mortalities 
because in very many cases, people hide them. I don't think we should hide it because it shows us really this evaluation of what happened to each animal, what happened to a species or a group of, of animals. And it is like a thermometer for us that we have to take a look, a closer look to what has been happening. So coming back to rehabilitation, many people say I rehabilitated an animal, but I cannot return it to the, to the nature. I think it is important to, to go into what is the rehabilitation. If you go into a dictionary, you will find these are measures taken for the recovery of captured wild animals that were hurt or injured by poachers to return them to their natural habitat once their health problems are solved. Conclusion of a rehabilitation process is a successful release in the wild for purposes of strengthening the population or establishing a new one. This process implies a lot of investigation and a lot of effort to do it properly, that we are not going to go into details because the idea is to understand overall the rehabilitation program that starts with rescuing, reception, attention, rehabilitation, and release, where once more conservation biology and animal welfare support each other. It is not just biologist or just a veterinarian, but the whole team participate in, 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 this, in this process. And the very important uh, thing is that every individual counts. So, hello, I just arrived, a little <laughs> tiny Tamandua Mexicana who had barely 10 days of, of his little life. Why are they in my hands? Why did this one come as well as very many others? Because they lived kidnapping, aggression, mistreatment. They were trafficked. On this picture, on the right, each of, each of these traffickers in the department of Cordoba, one three toed slot. If by chance police comes, they throw a slot to that uh, bushy uh, edge of the road so nobody can say you are trafficking uh, animals because they don't have anything in their, in their hands. So, what, what would you do if somebody throws you on the edge of the road? How would you feel? I'm asking you. They come completely stumped, thirsty, hungry, uh, completely uh, disturbed physically and emotionally, mistreated. In other, in other cases, with or without knowing a background of each individual. So let's see some pictures that can illustrate what happened to, to them generally. In this here, you see a little Tamandua Mexicana was picked up on the edge of the road full of worms. The worms were here, the worms were there. In the eye, you can find here in the eye, has, it had some three to four worms. All that we had to take out and continue with the attention to the animal. This little one was brutally taken from the mother chest. This little armadillo, nobody knew what happened to, the, to this one, came here and in the afternoon died. This little two toad slot came to us already dead, supposedly felt from the tree where he was born, felt on the floor, was still alive, and when he came to us, it came completely dead. You find here electrocution of a two toad slot. A tiny little three-toed slot, Bradipus variegatus, was brutally taken from the mother chest, sold in the uh, illegal trafficking, and came to us without, you can see on this little face, so very many things that tells you. First of all, it was completely uh, like, what am I doing here? Who are you? What is going on? Without understanding 
what was really uh, happening. And you find this little heel of a tooth, tooth slot that was hurt in the process of taking the little one from, from the mother chest for some reason was, uh, was hurt. Uh, very many times for uh, the animals trafficked, uh, they filed their nails. Their nails are naturally very sharp. So they filed them so they would not intimate uh, the possible uh, buyer, generally people from the, from the big cities. And in that process, they really fracture their nails because even though they look uh, uh, as uh, they look as nails, but they fulfill the function of the toes. So you can imagine the result. Armadillo heard with a machete took us almost three months to manage to recover it. Very many times that is not possible because before coming to be attended, we really don't know how long time that poor animal stayed without being attended at all. Uh, very many, many times the mother has to flee and they find themselves just alone without understanding what was going on. Uh, in other cases, dogs, hunters killed the mother as well the offsprings stayed completely on their own. What do we do when we find ourselves face to face with a being from the forest? That first understanding and the first intention is vital in order to fulfill with the good rehabilitation. So it is very important to understand the situation so we will manage the situation and we would not need to handle of the animal. And all that we do, we try to think about the final destination of conservation in situ. Of course, there are cases where you cannot do it, but it is very important to have a very, very clear note. So, very few establishments take into account, account attention according to the age of an animal, the emotional states and their psychology. Very many times and still is going on and it is happening among the professionals, the fears of imprinting and taming among other situations, the animal that come to be attended. Well, I really think and we prove it over 25 years that we should not have fear. We should have concern to do the, our job uh, every time better and better, but fear not. If we know the ages, if we understand the characteristics of different ages of, of mammals in general, and in particular of these animals that we talk about, all our fear would go really away. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the management and other things in order to, to express a little bit better what I mean about that. In the management of, uh, of the XC2 program, it is very important, personalized attention and with compassion. Very many times, and let's try to, to remember uh, human, human babies, very many times you just need to stay close to a baby who cries and sympathize with the baby and all the, all the frustration and fear and pain, etc., disappeared. Well, the same happens with these, with these animals. You don't need to carry them 24 hours a day. You don't need to pet them 24 hours a day but it is important that you have compassion and share it with them. It, another very important thing is treatments that do not cause pain and discomfort, that give us rapid results, they, that they are patient friendly without secondary effects, considering emotional states of a patient at first as the, an animal just arrived. 
So you have to come to holistic or integrative medicine and, and start to practice them and, and work. So if we talk about the well-being of the animals under the process and our care, we have to auspicious condition for the individual to forget past traumas and acquire self-confidence, independence from a human ability to express it. You may, may say that is not possible. It is very possible if you understand and consider different ages of animals who come to be attended. Personalized attention, security, and a vital space. Very many people say, oh, the animal cries all the time. I don't know what to do it, so I carry it. That's why the vital space is important to understand and security. Because if you fulfill the basic conditions for an animal at arrival, you will, you will manage that the animal does not cry, it feels secure, you offer it the right food and at the right place. And you are tender loving. So which means you have compassion, you understand that an animal came in the conditions that are everything but the conditions uh, it, it, should, it should really be. So it is very important uh, to auspicious the search for shelter and food when they are bigger, when they they overcome uh, the, that arrival, which is very traumatic very many times. Intraspecific relations. And the very important thing for the rehabilitation is the development of innate behavior. If you manage that, even though it's practically impossible to fulfill all the conditions as the, uh, as the animal would have in their natural habitat, but you somehow approach, you will get it. You will manage to do the, a very good rehabilitation. Suitable environment, extremely, extremely important, is a space that provides shelter and that resembles to his natural habitat and according to the age. As you can see, these two little nine-banded armadillos, the space is not very big but the space has a content that they really need and require in order to, to rehabilitate and grow. Vital space that brings them protection and it is like a cradle. Of course, it is very different from a human cradle, but it is a cradle which provides them with the security, uh, proper feeding, warmth, all those, all those things, possibility when they feel, when they come psychologically to the point of exploring, they will do it on their own. Intimacy. Uh, this was a three-toed slot, three years old. We thought we were never going to, to make it because it would get uh, sick every, every so often. So that's why it stayed with us three years. This was the only slot who stayed with us three years. And she came to her adult stage and she kept on loving the basket. That basket was not a cradle anymore. Long time ago stopped to be a cradle, but it was her shelter and the intimacy that she could have in, in that space. Warmth and joy, as you can see it the space prevention, minimizing the risk of injury. When we talk about Xenartras, people imagine just slots, uh, climbing, being very arboreal, but as well, slot, um, armadillos and anteaters, especially giant anteater, that when they are adults, uh, they, they are not able to climb, but when they are little, they can climb to a certain point. So you have to take that into account. That means knowing the species that you are rehabilitating and minimizing the risk of injury. Protection against 
fear and discomfort. It is as well extremely important. Resuming all these situations, and there are others, it is vital the content of the space and not the size. Why? Because if you just receive an animal, it can be an adult animal or it can be a baby using two, two extremes of the situations that we generally live. If you receive a big one, you have to attend an animal. And if you have a very big space, the animal is going to run away from you. You will have difficulties to attend an animal. If you have a tiny little baby, the baby does not recognize in that in that period of, of his life, the big space, because the only thing what they need is the mother chest, which somehow uh, we try to, to make it uh, having a little basket here and there carrying the animal because you do have to carry an animal at the beginning. Just one person. A little bit later, we'll talk about that. So it, it is very important, the content of the space and not the size. Uh, face a face with a being from the forest. Be open and don't judge. Assess what a final destination would really be. Because they are different, that does not mean they are less. They are different. They have their own way of being. They have their own way of thinking. Really, they do. It is a completely different field that I think that we have to come to the point of admitting it. <clears throat> Emotional states are extremely important. And what many people do not know, they generally don't show their illness until it is too late. There is a very important law in the nature that you cannot show your uh, your illness because you will be uh, predate with some other from some other animals. So until it's when there is too late, generally you see they are doing very bad. And you ask, what do I do? How can I help it? It is not very much you can do it. Let it let it die in peace. Uh, <clears throat> Animals that come to be cared for, species and age, and the state of health upon arrival is important to, to take into, into, amount, into account. The babies, they are very vulnerable to any manipulation and handling. Generally, they are the ones who are taken from the forest and sold on the, on the roads. So with the babies, the confidence, the curiosity, ability to relate to others depends upon the people in charge of caring of them. They require an important knowledge about them in order to facilitate to each other appropriate attention. We talk about humans and different stages of the development throughout our life, but we don't make a comparison with other mammals. The other mammals similarly pass through all those stages the same. They are neonates, they are in their first infancy, they are uh, in their infancy or kids, adolescence and adult state. The period of each of these states is different to each species. As well, it can be different different from one individual to another, depending upon the conditions that that individual lived before coming to us. That's why it is very important to understand the whole situation. Everybody arrives completely stressed. So it is important to have, to take into account the nature of each specimen, if it is a reptile, bird, and their necessities. We worked with uh, Senartrans and some other species, but as well in the past, we worked with birds and reptiles using the slot <laughs> rehabilitation, of course, the basic, the basic of it, and we obtained really very good results. We may talk about that in some other, uh, in some other occasions. 
two toad slot baby. The only thing they need and is to be cuddled by the mother, as you can see it here. The imitation is practically perfect. You see a three toad slot, you see a little, a little tamandua mexicana being in her cradle, that she feels completely safe, that she's warm, that she's protected, and she starts interacting on her own with the surrounding. So what are the golden rules? Do not make noise. And the humans are very noisy. Reduce the staff to a minimum, maximum two professionals attending an animal. No volunteers attending animals unless you have volunteers uh, who will stay several months or maybe more. The ones that uh, you teach them, they, they pass the training and that you uh, put them to certain amount of animals, teaching how to attend them and observing them each time. And that is the biggest problem in the, in particular, in slot rehabilitation. Because in very many college rehabilitation centers, from the very beginning, people say, oh no, they did not have the mother, so they don't have who is going to teach them. Well, that is not completely true. Because if you bring them these conditions, and if you use these golden rules, you are very able to manage to rehabilitate an animal because when it comes from from one uh, uh, from one state to another you gradually start changing the conditions you have only one or maximum two people attending an animal so the animal starts having complete confidence with their rehabilitators so after some time, you turn as a background of the animals. They respond uh, to you because you feed them, you attend them, you are at any moment very aware of all their needs. But if whichever other person comes, they, they are alert and they hide themselves. So those who put the, the little slots generally uh, kids, infants, from some three, uh, three months up to one year generally, on the fences uh, to sunbathe, and they have visitors passing through, uh, petting them, touching them, them, and they think that they do rehabilitation. Uh, they are not doing a good rehabilitation. So later they will say, yes, I cannot take uh, that uh, animal back to the forest because they did not do the, the real rehabilitation. So it really is very, very important to have that in, in, their, uh, in their mind. Excuse me. So, well, that is, that is uh, in general what uh, we, can, we can talk about the rehabilitation and uh, if you have some other questions, well, there is a lot for each of these items. We could talk uh, another, in another uh, hour or so, but I think this overall is really very important. So thank you really very much. Thank you so much, Tinka. That, that was really interesting. Uh, I think Adriana has a question for you. Adriana, would you like to open your microphone? Yes, Tinka, it's always a pleasure for me to see you, my dear friend and mentor. So we send you a big slot hug from Costa Rica. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sure about the rehabilitation. I've seen in yeah. my country, unfortunately, many places rehabilitating a slots, but they put them all together in a basket, especially colepos because they say that way they do it better, they feel much better. But according to what I learned from you, you never do this. So do you think this is 
more stressful for the animals because if we think about the way how they live in the forest, we don't see them in the same way. We don't see them living in these groups of families, you know? So I think there is a misunderstood of treating these animals as many others. I always compare them with monkeys. I always say they are not monkeys. So I would like to know your opinion about this kind of practices. Well, yeah, you touch a really <laughs> very, very hot <laughs> question, but you are really very right. Uh, first of all, sloths and cenardras are really very, very different from primates. Uh, they live in, on the on the docile of the tropical forest. That's what they have in common. The rest, each of them are very different. Uh, Yes, I saw pictures of especially two toad slots in plastic buckets offering them uh, to tourists. Uh, well, that has a very particular name. We are talking uh, about uh, use of wild animals, babies, uh, unfortunately, babies uh, for uh, getting more and more um, wealthy certain, certain people. I forget the name. Well, anyway. Uh, so, slots, the mother slot of a two toed slot or a three toed slot, they give a birth just to one baby. Just to one baby. And that baby is dependent on the mother uh, for uh, seven months or more in, in case of a three toed slot or almost one year and a half in case of a two-toed slot. So it is not advisable by any means to have them in such a way because that is not the rehabilitation. That is just uh, uh, something very, very, very different. It stresses them very much because living in the forest, just make an exercise. If you live in the forest, on the chest of your mother, surrounded with the leaves, branches, and so and so on. And all of a sudden, you are put in a bucket, plastic bucket, with other, especially two toad slots. Among them, if they are in the conditions of, of, of a stressful situation, they can hurt each other because a two toad slot, even they are babies, they can be mean with, with each other. That is one thing. So we are talking about the possible about the stress and about the possible injury that they can make to each other, and it is very against the rehabilitation. That has nothing to do with the real rehabilitation. I don't know if I answer your question. No, yes, of, of course. I just wanted to confirm because for me this is not natural behavior, and I never no. understood the reason why they do it. No. I understand that they want to show up. Uh, the problem is. is Everybody refers to them as cute animals. And as you said, they are not bears, starting for that. They are not the stuffed animals. And I trust that now we are promoting more in the country, the stuffed animal selfies campaign that talks about not using these animals for um, tourism reasons, to feed them, to attract them to any kind of practice that will interfere with their natural behavior. That situation is gonna change, hopefully. Yes, besides, I think it is a good opportunity to say that the specialist group of the IUCN from very many years, we have, we have been working towards bringing the world of Xenardras to everyday people. I can tell you in Colombia, we managed to bring Xenardras to a point uh, when they are considered as a special group that really requires a special, in particular, attention in the centers for the attention, uh, in terms of uh, uh, having some more knowledge about them and so on. So I, I really hope in other countries of their origin, uh, gradually people uh, would come to the same point. And that is really very important. Besides, there are several of the institutions in Central and South America, not very many, because it is not an easy task to work with Senatras and slots in particular, 
uh, but we have been supporting each other. There you find the project was easy. You find in, in Suriname, uh, Green Heritage. Here we are in Colombia. Uh, I know in uh, Brazil there are some uh, some institutions, I don't know their, their names. So you see, there are not very many of us, but uh, we are really very, very compromised to do that. Ah, there is a process I want to share with you. In Venezuela, recently has one year and something, started uh, with a three toad slot, the person uh, managed uh, to save and, and recover and the, the problem of slots in particular in Venezuela is really very, very high. So there is another process, another program uh, waking up in Venezuela. And I think it really is very, very nice to, to share that. We have been stimulating that person uh, all this, all this year, and we really hope that they will manage to contribute to the conservation of slots in particular. Thank you very much. Um, Christian, uh, do you have any questions? Now that I see you online here. <laughs> uh, I think that um, I'm very happy then you can do it again, your presentation, uh, because I think it's very, very important to know uh, your experience, especially with the slot and, and Sinatras in general. And um, I believe it's so many people get inspired by you, by your knowledge, by your story. And, um, and this, is, this is all about, is to share knowledge with the younger generations and we can provide conservation for the biodiversity in Central and South America, especially. Oh, thank you very much for listening this chat. <laughs> so if there are any other questions, we will we'll answer them uh, later on. We'll be happy to let, answer them. Uh, of course, if you have any general questions, you can always uh, contact our specialist group. You will find uh, a form on our website, xenartrans.org. And of course, I invite you also to visit our website, uh, our YouTube channel, uh, follow us also on uh, Instagram and Facebook. <laughs>